Welcome back, everyone, as NRG picks up a massive win on Lotus. And boy, oh boy, if you told me last week that NRG would win on Lotus, I would have said that you were taking some, some crazy pills. But not the case here today, because NRG looked fantastic. And Wyatt, Mimi, this is, is really the NRG that we want to see, the NRG that always comes in with a game plan, the NRG that always outthinks their opponent. This very much felt like that NRG returning to form based on what we saw last week. Yeah, definitely. It looked like Sen wanted to go for what we saw C9 do to Loud yesterday. They they pick into the map the other team picked the previous week. Yeah. Counter strat them. But it didn't go that way because NRG, unlike Loud yesterday, actually came into this week with a new look. They they uh, changed around what was wor or rather not working for them on the previous. And Sen struggled against that new look, things being centered around Victor. Yeah, they really did. And I think for Sentinels, we saw some of the issues with their composition in this one. With this double controller, taking early space is a bit of a challenge. So you have to kind of be slow, work it with your smokes, but they wanted to play this mid round. So in rounds like this one, they're oftentimes hitting these late sites without a smoke to back them up. And because you're investing so much in these early rounds, you have to put a sky flash to pressure to get your harbor wall up, to, to use your Viper utility in that way. In the late rounds, you're often running into these situations where you're at kind of a utility deficit, where NRG is playing to the strength of their comp, which is with the Omen and the Sky and the Jet, playing for these super fast and strong retakes. And I think that was kind of a struggle that also showed in the head-to-head -head between these two Jet players, because the support for Victor was fantastic, Wyatt. Yeah, Ten's far worse stats than Victor, but I don't really think that's much fault of his own. He was put in a terrible position. Most of that attack half because he's just having to dash into his smoke into sight. But when he pops out of it, there's not really there's not really good smokes in front of him for the defenders to have to work around. There's just that one high tide. So for the defenders, it's pretty easy to immediately just take the fight onto him. Also, even if he stayed alive, then his job is to take point after the fact and keep fighting because after the spike goes down, those players on Sentinels to win out the rounds just have to take fights. They can't play back. There's no smokes to play around. And honestly, most of the reason that this game even ended up kind of close in yeah. the end was because of Zekin just going crazy and winning out some of those rounds, taking the fights they needed to. So they did the right thing. But the comp for me just wasn't lending itself to a good game. Yeah, and it meant that, sure, Sentinels has a fantastic player quality. Their, their kind of synergy has improved vastly, so they were good at winning some of those late-round fights. But for me, this is another game where I think NRG looked a lot stronger in the way of game plan, which I'm very happy to see because their last two kind of ideas around Lotus ended in disappointment. This looked a lot better. Yeah, and I think also when you talk about Sentinels and NRG, it, really the devil's in the details with them because they're such practice, prepared, prepared, prep teams they're so good so you really have to exploit those small details where you can which was yeah. to your point which is the reason why i think tens really suffered today yeah one of the main problems with that comp too is just in the early rounds and the late rounds honestly with the you know sentinels players being forced to play around high tides and viper utility it's just so obvious where they're going mm -hmm. and especially in the early round like the way that they were trying to take parts of a and control that where they have the viper wall uh, through A and then the Viper Orb and then a Sky Dog and then Tens goes out, out yeah. um, to clear the right side. Like already you're committing three players there and that's enormous information for the defending side. It's not like you have an omen and you can throw that smoke down, but you're actually, you know, playing with your Sentinel trying to control C main at the same time. Like, no, you actually just have to have three players there to control it. You're hitting the site. Okay, well, we, we know you're hitting it because you have to be there with that utility. For sure, for sure. And they tried to go for a fake and it just didn't really work that well because they had to go into a site yeah. with no smokes down, <laughs> so it's just rough. And even when Sentinels was struggling with their game plans, we still saw NRG shine. I want to just take a moment to talk about the artist, oh, formerly dude. known as FNS, because Finesse was having some <laughs> amazing calls in this game, and the casters were going crazy about this one. Super cool idea, right? You have the paranoia to block out the sound. You have Victor dashing in behind. It's just these little plays that might be preset, might not, but these ideas that NRG is able to come up with on the fly are just... Excellent, and I think that's what's always defined teams led by finesse. And to your point on this round, I think one of the reasons that it was called is because nothing happened towards A 
and they knew that they could go for that. There was just no noise there, so yeah. that, that was one of the reasons that they, I think, opted to actually going for that aggressive play on that round. There, there were just so many tells, right? I yeah. think from uh, across the board, and and when you give that info, right, or lack of info to FNS, he knows exactly what to do. Sorry, the artist formerly known as FNS now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I am very, very excited for where this NRG team can potentially go, especially going into Icebox or the Heineken 0.0 Icebox. Box, uh, which will be coming up here in a moment. But before we get into Matt, a slow roll for a minute here. Let's get a little warm up going with the Aim Lab shoot around. And here's everyone's favorite streamer. It's Sam. He's going to be shooting bubbles like a champion. I'm very excited. We get to see Sam on Icebox. This guy was <laughs> incredible on this map at Lock In. Probably like the best individual player on a map was his Viper on Icebox. Yeah, back that in. box. He's so damn good at it. And he was also fantastic at the start of this series. His Omen play on Lotus was really quality. Sam is continuing to prove that even though before their first couple matches, people had doubts of whether he could perform at this level. He's here to stay. This guy's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I think some, someone had to tell him what was going on in this segment. He looked somewhat confused. Okay, now he's... He, now, he, <laughs> he looks like he... Yeah, he oh, like, wait, I gotta shoot this? the bubbles. What am I doing? Oh, okay, that makes sense now. Okay, let me go faster here. What a guy. <laughs> he's yeah. figuring it out. He learns fast. That's why he's such a good player. Exactly. Really, I think that this aim lab shooter on has just taught us everything that we need to know here about some. I feel so no more analysis is necessary. Person, yeah. I've connected with him as a human being, and this is where we are right now. But yeah, I, I mean, again, you know, I think it just goes without saying, Sam has been such an instrumental part of this team. The young players on this squad, right? You know, Zek and also popping off too in that last game. But now we go to the Heineken 0.0 Icebox. I've been wanting to say that all season long. <laughs> so I'm really stoked that we're going into the box now. Uh, and, and look, this is a great position here, Mimi, for NRG. They, you, you look at this pool, you're like, this makes sense. Sentinels, of course, they're going to pick Lotus. NRG looked booty at it last week. And then they win it. They come out 13-10. NRG have to be feeling so good right now. Yeah, they really do. And we've already talked about how good NRG is. But for the side of Sentinels, they're solid on this map. They've been willing to play it. If for the sure. Basic it's not count them out. But it's not one of the favorites in their pool. You know, they're reaching into the bottom of the cooler. It's still nice and cool. It's a good drink. Yeah. It's not quite your first choice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was a Heineken 0.0 You want You want a fresh crisp Heineken 0.0. .0. That's what you really want there. They're getting their money's worth, let me tell you this much. Uh, that being Where's said, though, check, uh, as we get ready for this next matchup, Wyatt, uh, what, what, are you, what are you looking for here as far as like adjustments from Sentinels? Because, and I say this because, it, it, to the point we were talking about in the pre-show, Sentinels very focused on putting their, their players in their comfort roles, their comfort picks. Do you think that we're going to get more of the same here potentially on Icebox, or could we potentially see some innovation? It's possible that we could see them try and lean into something like we saw on the previous map since Harbor is becoming so uh, prevalent on, on Icebox. Sure, yeah. But of course, Icebox is still one of the maps in the pool that is, since it came out and still is, it's just so scrappy. And you want to see Tens and Zekka just be put in position to go nuts on the A site and run around and swing with freedom, be set up in that way. Yeah, I think we established yesterday as well that I really like duelist players, and this is a map where I want to see your favorite both. thing to talk about. Absolutely, and I'm going to talk about it more, because I want to see both artists and Tens maybe having an opportunity to go onto the jet on this map. Previously, both these teams were playing the variation with the KO, where it was forcing players to flex around a little bit. I'm not sure if NRG will make the change to artists on jet, because I think, as we saw well, in that one. Yeah, they've kind of moved away from comfort, and on the other side, Sentinels has really moved towards it. So I think that they might put tens on the jet, but I don't think NRG will do the same for artists. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Where it's like, do you keep this going, right? I I thought Victor was fantastic in that last game. He was he was effective. He got the op shots where he needed to. Victor's a phenomenal a, a rifler, but to see him also take that op and 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 do some work with it. Good. That's all you want. Baseline, right? Just get get you over the line here. And I think on Icebox, especially with NRG's you know experience on this map here, Sentinels have a lot to worry about here, uh, Wyatt. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, speaking of the comfort picks, artists. The the jet for him was definitely a comfort pick for sure. A lot of points in his career. That was one of the things where Navi at the time FPX. Sometimes when they were in a pinch. They would just switch things back to, all right, we, we've gone too crazy. We've yeah. strayed too far away from what works. Let's bring Artis back onto the jet, bring a little normalcy to the composition. And that was something where he would always shine if they kind of 
you know, went a little bit too outside the box. Yeah, yeah. Now, I do want to let everyone know at home, because I'm sure you guys are like, man, these guys are talking forever. And I get it. I totally understand. I love the sound of my own voice. But thankfully, though, the game is going to be starting in a moment here. We had a we had an issue on the stage. We had a crash there, so we just had to get that sorted out uh, to ensure that we can get back into the matchup as fast as possible. And that's why you're hanging out with us, you know, so stop spamming casters, start the game. Also, I'm a host, not a caster. Come on, learn your roles, people. Anyway, moving on, though, as we look forward to this matchup, up. Uh, I, I, I am excited because I do think we can go to this game three here, uh, and I would really like to see Sentinels knock NRG off of their game, but let's do this. Tens on the jet. So part one of your favorite thing to talk about, Mimi, is happening. And part one and part two is artists are still on the stage, so that makes me think that maybe we get the they jet on Victor him? or we get the KO. I would expect him to probably stick with that, but maybe they're really into the Victor jet, and I wouldn't hate that. Yeah, it's possible. My question is honestly on the next one. I just want to see what Death picks. Um, I think if anyone were going to play the Harbor, it would sure. probably be him here. So mm -hmm. we'll we'll see how that's actually going to end up in a moment. And they're all okay. so they are it's almost as if you understand this game very well, Wyatt. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well done, though. And yeah, and finesse is going to go for the uh, the pickup on KJ there. So we'll see if we're going to get this Victor Jet. But I think we are going to get Victor at least on a duelist of some kind here. Yeah. So I think this is going to play out quite similarly with this attack siding start for the double controller composition. A lot of your strengths with this one are towards B, fighting deep with the harbor wall, um, towards oh. A, taking the deep fights as well with that jet player. So I think that uh, a lot of what is going to have to be emphasized for the defensive side here on energy is leaning into the fast flood retakes that they're playing on map number one and denying space in deep areas like towards snowman against this harbor comp. But at this point, we've seen this comp a million times. You kind of know what to expect. It's no longer a new thing, really. Yeah. Yeah, this comp really defined the, the latter part of the Icebox meta this last year. And now, finally, for the first time on Icebox, there's actually new things you can do. So yeah. that's nice. Um, and we new is good. Those new things on Sentinels. So <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. Kind of a clash of the new and the old. All right, guys. Well, let's see how this one's going to play out. Come on, Riot Games Arena. Let's go ahead. Let's wake up. Let's make some noise. And let's send it over to your casters. You got Doug and Bala for the call. Thank you so much, Corner Boy. Yeah, we're heading over to the Heineken 0, .0 Icebox, and it's going to be a banger. I, I, my only request is that we get to map three, yeah. honestly. Like, however this plays out, I hope it's a good game, and I hope it goes the distance. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to get there. Icebox is the pick of NRG, and we saw at lock and how strong it was for them. That was one where they had pulled off a 9-3 comeback against yeah. Koi in their very, very first map, and it's the exact same comp. So let's see it, how it plays out. This is where I think I saw the first flashes of Som being a tier one controller, being a tier one level player on that international stage. And he's continued to live up to that expectation of him, replacing Marved, who by the way, on the bench for Sentinels on the other side of the stage as well. Fast all dropping off on the left side there, the Cascade denies a lot of the vision that you might see for the players over towards Boiler. That turret's a little deep. This three-man flank that's coming through from NRG is gonna have to scale up pretty far before it's caught. Which also means that that turret is gonna not really tell them early enough, maybe. No, they break it really early, so. Pankata's aware. Yeah, instantly has to turn around. So which is the call for Sentinels? Are they going to push forward or are they going to fall back and try to receive the flank? Oh, they want to go forward. The drone pushes his way up. Tessie tense and Sassy close by. Finesse not able to get anything but Artist can. And you see this fight happening across the middle of the map as well. Goes in favor of Artist now. Energy of full control. And that's not a frenzy for tens. That is a... Big round, and artist immediately having impact. He was by himself over there at that boiler. Completely solo. Received both tens and the rest of the Sentinels players that were pushing behind him. Dealt with that so easily. And you do see him picking up that Marshall. He does tend to op on this map when he gets down to it. Even though you won't see that too often on the KJ. I think for everybody here, this is a little bit more traditional roles for most of them. And for Sentinels, they're still sticking to that same sort of switch up. Definitely full committing. And, and when you do see Harbor Viper on one map, for most teams, you're going to tend to see that on all the maps where you can run it on, which is pretty much all the maps. Great opener up from Artis. 
Again, picking up where he left off in the previous round. Hot start for him. What more can he find? They've left death close by, too. Perhaps expecting aggression once again, like they saw in the previous round. Good drone out from Crash's two spots. At least one of the Sentinels players over here. And they do want to pivot over. Tens does... Oh, he did make some noise on that jump. Just a step. It wasn't much, but it was enough. So gets all the way up here. That's the thing with Tens on this map. He does take a lot of risks, and it does pay off for him. But a big indicator for how this game is going to go is if Sentinels can continue oh, the same success down. they had on Lotus at getting on the site, getting that plant down. Right. See Finesse and Crash, he's just dancing around, back site, and then you have Artist close by too, but Tens has gotten so close, and truly, they know where he is at this point. Every single shot going wide. Oh. Poison's off. Sassi delivering a clean one of his own. Crash, he's still trying to spam control the spray from the Spectre. And it all quietly turns into a 2v2. Look at how weak the remaining members of Sentinels seconds. are. And the Molly is not going to let him through. Finesse is in such a good position, too. Even left. if they choose to One swing out from that, remaining. he's able to receive. He's able to hold him. Well done by energy. Still issues there, rearing. Like For Artis, he definitely was not aware of how close Tens was. Remember, he was all the way at the B side at the beginning. So he's rotating into unknown information. Maybe missed the calm or the calm was not made. And that is a ridiculous pedigree for the yeah, it is. players on the server here. Seven of ten. Winning an international, a global tournament. At this point, there is a distinction. This event is international right here. Even though it's still only one region in a sense. Interesting, but no protocols to deny that orb early on. Take flight. No shock mollies or anything like that. They hold it. The dart, too. Oh. And I'm not sure. I think that drone did not clear properly. Leading artists to getting that first kill. Set the wall up in a cheeky little spot. Oh, and Saucy was ready for it. He was waiting. That one was one he was relying on over and over and over. So not surprised to see the Sentinels players easily handling that. Victor spotting three there wasn't easy. It wasn't able to easily handle ahead. that. Hit so many targets there. Everybody hiding from the dart, but there it gives Crossy space to walk up right now. Trying to make a play. One spotted, and there's a member just up top. No peek. I don't think Zekin saw him. Otherwise, Crashes would be out of here. He's patient. Where's the swing Dodge. from? Crash, you're just so aware. The game sense is insane. Not able to Spike deliver on the third. A. How does he make that work? He's just good, man. And they're low. Look, Sassi Pecata. Portuguese mode activated in the 2v2, but they're low. Yeah, how does that account for poor health? It doesn't. It cannot. Spike down A. 10, Ten seconds, seconds spike gone. Oh! Scrappy on that one. Yeah, it was. I can't believe Crash has made that work. That was a completely unadvantaged situation. But again, losing that drone early. Zekin doesn't use a dart to follow up. And I think on that jiggle, he did not see him. Must not have. Because he just no walks way. back in that angle. Not really slow clearing and not ready to pre-fire. Dude, Finesse has gotten so many kills in this series of just shooting someone in the back of the head. As he's just like tucked in a corner and they just walk into his crosshair. That's what this energy team strives for. Take the advantage fights whenever you can. Back to the standard Harbor Viper. B main control right now with that cascade deep. But this is Psalm's playground, the back of yellow. The key thing here is how good Victor is at supporting him with a flash, but he doesn't have any. Doesn't Super have low money, and they're not actually going light armor here. Surprising, given their insistence on going for it on every other map. There is a little help from Crash. He does have Hunter Fury, too. A lot of patience there. They're just waiting, and they're so far up. They're ahead of the utility that they've dropped, the Viper Wall and the Harbor Wall. They've got to wait for the second dart to come back up. It just did 10 stashes and Psalms in the off angle. Uh, he was never pushed off of it. He's about to get this angle named after him. 
If he continues to just farm from back there, yeah. Mid map's not open either for Sentinels. And now you see some attempted pressure towards Sam via the shock dart. Triple swing coming. Remaining. And a double kill for Victor. Next time, mind the heavy machinery. 4 0 lead for NRG. And this is now a gun round for yep. Sentinels. They should be able to punch back here, but it's just looking very clean early on. Uh, that's just insanely easy there, too. I do really enjoy watching NRG play this map because of how often and how many protocols they show for dealing with stuff like that. The regular, slow, patient push. Criticism of Sentinels there would be that high tide came out way before Tens and Zekin were even ready. The cooldown on his dart was not up yet. And so instantly when it came back up, they're going for it because they want to spend all the time on the high tide. But at that point, Energy already know what's going on. And yeah, Doug, you're right. No util to try to deny that over and over is going to cause problems later on. That was insane. Finesse getting tagged through. They use the Reckoning and they scale up with it. What do Energy have for response? No Crashies has this Hunter's Fury and there it is. This might be the first plant. Yeah. Death took some damage off of it. But the job is done. He did what he was looking to do. Oh. Now the fight for the side ensues. Tens tackled. the first to fall. Crash, he's using utility to get some info and push them back. Look at how NRG just flawed onto the site. Like a death ball that's pushing back the attacking side. You still have so much utility, you're gonna have to deal with from Sentinels. Oh, you still have another Molly out from Sasi, who's now dead. Second spot, it dropped. Hey, this is getting ugly very quickly for Sentinels Faithful. I mean, similar start to Lotus, but sides flipped. Energy dominating so far. Time to stop back On Icebox again, their map choice. And the bricks are called for Sentinels. For that to be the first plant is definitely concerning outside of Pistol. Because this comp relies on getting into post plant situation. It relies on the staying power and the cooldowns of Harbor coming back up. That's how DRX played it. That's how Loud played it when introducing the Harbor Viper on this map. Yes, it provides you some early control options, but that is the main win condition. And NRG denying it over and over and over. That's got to be the discussion right now. Tens feels like he's the only guy who's being proactive on getting into that site, which is a difference because I don't feel like he was that proactive on Lotus. Even though to Wyatt, to what Wyatt said on the desk, to Tens' credit, he was definitely being put in positions that were difficult for him. Yeah, rough spots for sure. And where he, he, the team relied on him to be sending away his life. But not in this case. This case, he's jumping up top 410, finding picks. His team's just not there to follow up with him. Key ults here for Sentinels, though. You've got the pit. You can play around once you get into a post plan situation. You have Zekin's ult, too, for the same circumstance. And to counter Finesse's ult. Mm -hmm. Which, with the pit that you just mentioned, would be so crazy if he just uses that to counter. So let's see. Zekin's got to be aware of that. We have seen mistakes in the past, especially with new teams, where they don't fully consider the ults. Point suppressed. They're scaling up mid. Yeah, aggro here, Artis. No op, but they're going for it. They haven't really tested this before. That is a place where energy can start drone. to find even more value, though, which is yeah. insane to see and think that energy can find more value than they are. But if they put a player down there, Finesse is known to just post up on the angle and watch the cross. And Sentinels hasn't really been pivoting so much so far. So I don't think you're really looking for that yet from NRG. But if that becomes a tool in the kit for Sentinels. It definitely could end up being abused in mid. Wow. Early. I mean, that is so early, but it also, it's not gonna bait out the Hunter's Fury from Zekin. Oh, there's still, there's, there's still so much time. So he's getting value by the time. Look how he just bought three players to rotate into him. Not a single sound. They're so quiet. That's gonna erupt and crash. She's once again ready for it. Kills going back and forth. The spike's still not making its way past 410. 
They can't give up on this though. No, I mean, 20 you don't seconds. Really have time to pivot. This yeah. is full fuel right now from some. The, the 10 seconds isn't even gonna be enough. They're All staying up. on sites. Spam, 13 seconds left. Spikes down. I don't know that they're gonna oh, be able to do okay. this. Play on the outside of it now. Saucy getting the spike Holy. down to 2v2, but Pankata's weak. Again, Brazilian buff activated, and they've gotten that far. Som left in this 1v2, he gets one. Can he do it? So patient. Letting it swing into him, and it does. And it's the newcomer to this core of NRG. Who takes down the players that the core struggled at against so often last year? The Sassy and Pancata from Loud. Great round for Pancata, but Psalm, I mean, I thought he was going to get the Molly in time to deny oh! the plant entirely. There's the pop off I'm expecting, but it's for his teammates, not for himself. 6-0 lead now. Get out of my way. And honestly, with tools for more. But maybe Tense can find something with the blade. He's alone Again, here. You see this two-man creep down from NRG in towards Tube. And they know he's there! Tense not able to find anything. And Artis is the one who's traded, so that's actually at least good for Zek in there. That he's able to target down the Sage who had the res. Pankata finding a kill too. It's good to see Pankata get active in the series against 100 Thieves. He was 0 and 8 in first kills, first deaths. Now, that wasn't one of those. But he is looking for those kills while his team finds space elsewhere. Finally, an advantage here for Sentinels. And a key one, too. It's not just the numbers, but think about how good Crashies has been at anchoring sites in these last couple of rounds. Not a factor here. I'm wondering if they get the right read right now. It's the kitchen pressure that actually, ultimately, that duel in mid. Ends up giving them. How does Victor find it? I don't know, man. They were in trouble. It was a 4v2, essentially, as they were starting to surround him. Do they know there's more. Sam puts down the pit as well. They can now tuck inside. Sassy with the spam. Death from up top. He is in such a good spot. He oh can make such God. a big play here. I don't know that he's expecting a second. Now his position given away. It's not the pit player, though. 30 seconds left. He's staring right at him. Oh, they continue to pass by one another. Eventually, they're going to find the spam here. Oh! There it is. He can give this up now. His teammates here. Look, Finesse is on the flank. He's all the way up on the flank. That turret's nearsighted. 13 remaining. seconds left. Whopping, what, what can you do? 10 seconds left. Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> is this the best? What a stomp. Som with the pit. Victor with the awareness to find that first on the flank is ridiculous. One down. And I thought for sure they were going to be able to at least process of, of elimination. Saw him away from that little oh, corner. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So many players getting active here for NRG now. Victor in that last round, I think, huge props to him. He was so good on Lotus. And it's the game sense considerably improved for... What I can tell on the server right now, he's consistently finding the right places to look at the right times. Sentinels left searching for answers, looking for some sort of an opening. They've succeeded at getting the spike down a couple of times, but they haven't been able to convert from there. Once again, you have Sam back yellow. Pankata won this duel last time, but oh, okay. he did this time too. Again, improvements from Pankata, super important to see for Sentinels, regardless. But the trade back immediately on the other side of the map. Poison's off. And Saucy still hasn't found a time to use this ult yet. This might be a good time as any. You should run. Pankata's investing his. And they can play retake here. They have Victor's ult if they just want to wait this out and then fight. Or they're just going to push into it. It's used, but... Early. Oh. None of the Yuto countered out from Sentinels that were possible here. And because of that lockdown on the one player... The... Wait. Yeah, Pankata's in trouble. He's in so much trouble. This two-man flank from NRG once again has members of Sentinels trapped. Reckoning used. Reckoning suit as Victor has to sidestep. 
but Finesse continuing to frag, continuing to lead from the front. Sassi and Pakada outnumbered and outgunned. Four for Finesse, the defuse for Samit, eight for NRG. <laughs> Reckoning there too, they're dancing around it that entire time in a 4v4 situation. My ultimate is ready. You thought, oh, that's gonna be impossible for them to walk through, but they treat that ult like it's a boss fight. They just sidestep every little thing that's getting thrown out in phase two of that post plan. And it's, it's like they've practiced it a million times. Ult that's intended to cause chaos, honestly. And it was just cool, calm, and collected <laughs> from them. Honestly, might've caused more chaos there for Sentinels in yeah. the case, or they're trying to track them. But I think as well, they're all playing in the pit too. So they don't have the same value out of the pulses from the Reckoning. Eight zero. Oh. One of the toughest score lines we've seen so far here in the Americas League. We've definitely seen some first half deficits, but we have not seen really anything like this. There's still a shot for them to keep it competitive. I think an eight-four, given how this has gone, would feel like a win. Oh, for really? sure. But it, I mean, it given has to how start it's now. gone, yeah, for yeah. sure. I think the thing that I'm thinking in my head, I'm just like, how is this possible? Given the fact that you remember that game I was talking about where the only game we saw for energy at, on Icebox against Koi, the first map that we saw from them this year, they lost the first half 9-3. And that was the defense side they started on. That was the defense side. They came back on the attack. One of the most ridiculous Icebox comebacks. I mean, maybe it was a precursor to the finals of that tournament, but... Try not to get shot, okay? How can Sentinels find a way back into that, given that context? Not like that. That's not the start they were looking for. That's Tens again, too. He's been consistently dying over here, fast B-Main. And he's updrafting and trying to find something again. But now I think it's starting to hurt him more than be a positive factor in the Sentinels approach. On Lotus, he went eight and 16. He was two for seven. First kills, first deaths. A brutal scoreline for Tens, who we, we all thought was return of the King last week. Yeah. On the jet, too. On Icebox. I mean, so historic on this map. It, if he can't going, can't, if he can't get going now, I'm questioning the role changes entirely. Still a shot here. First Sentinels, even though they find themselves down. Actually, I don't know. This is going to be really difficult to deal with. You have the lockdown. You have the Hunter's Fury. Well, you have the Hunter's Fury. Second's using his. Should be broken, yep. It is, yeah. And they're just going to try to spam the Cove, and they do. Where's the Stop the plant for now. Where's the defense on that? KO Nade comes in on top of it, too. Pancada does retrieve it just in time. <laughs> Saw him clean for the first. Victor left in this 1v2. Another clutch situation. Can he pull it off? Can he continue to pile it on? He's got time here. He can play this quietly. He can play it carefully. They hear him. The onus is on Sentinels. They have to go fast. Victor's gotten it down to a 1v1. Having to tuck tail. He's only got one second. He's got to commit to the plant now. And just puts all the onus on Pagala. But he gives him enough of a time window to play it. Now Victor on the back foot. And Pagala clutches it out. Got it when he needed it most. Got it when the situation looked ever so dire. You wanted an 8-4, here comes the start of something from Sentinels. And it shifted the energy in this room just slightly, momentum potentially. Now for Pancata, who has been having a great game on this alert consistently. Maybe finding some form. Looks like Ten's got purposefully knifed there. So that he could start to rotate, trying to give Zekin the opportunity to come in and drone and make it look like there's something behind. And it's worked, actually. NRG has pulled four people to this side. And Sassy may find some room to work with mid. It seems like Victor's watching it, understanding that that's a weakness on the map right now. And they've left Finesse on an island. Yeah, he has utility, but he's by himself. 
been finding some value, and I think if crashes can start up. to rotate back now that no noise has been found for so long, Victor's knife is going to be coming back up soon here. Be very curious if he uses it earlier, if they're just going to call the rotate. That's what they're doing. Yeah, knife just came up. You're absolutely they're right. They're here for finesse now. And finesse made it just to stay alive. That's huge. Now the Hunter's Fury tends weak, trying to tuck away, trying to stay alive. But no, finesse's turret kills him. We've seen a lot of turret kills this weekend. Very quickly here, a 3v3. And you still have two members left. of NRG who are still back sight. Victor, one of them. Death playing with fire and the high low is too much to deal with. Crashes with three. Hakala once again left in this clutch situation. But it's not a 1v1 anymore. It's way more difficult. Ten seconds left. As the closing moments of the round come to an end, you start to think about the following. And you look at the buy for Sentinels, there's not much here for Pankada. Saving this rifle is huge. They don't even get the economic benefits of a win streak there. Instead, back to relying on the loss bonus. That is so unlucky for 10. There's barely a gap in that Viper wall, by the way. But he was updrafting that entire time. I'm surprised that turret wasn't just pecking at him the entire... When that Hunter's Fury was going off, he was really trying to avoid it. Fear. Intense. Ooh, early wall from artists. I don't think we've seen this before. They're not in this game, which is... He took the orb while having the res. He still hasn't used that, by the way, the entire half. They haven't had a need for it. But he just stole the orb from them, which is funny. It is close to the end of the half, but some could have gotten that. They're just interested in denying on this eco more than anything. And this is NRG at full force, right? Like, this is the, the, the roster. This is the squad. The look that we expected. They're not just satisfied with taking everything. They're also denying from the other side. Sentinels, the remaining members of Sentinels anyway. Still two rifles here, but they're all pushing it on to A. Where once again, you see a couple of members from NRG close by. You've got Finesse, you have Crashies. The Shock Dart could be good. Yep, deal some damage on Asasi. How much more can he shock find? Dart. The second Shock Dart right in his face. Really not aware of the fact that there are a couple of members right above him too. Sentinels starting to flood out, starting to swing through. Spike down A. The Rez bringing Victor back up. And two rifles still left. in play for the attacking side. Those artist slows are so good. Continuously, they're trying to fight within them, but no room to actually move. There's one. They're doing it. They're keeping it competitive. 2v2. One enemy remaining. <laughs> and it's just a share for tens. Is this another tense moment remaining. in the books? He's gotten it down to one. Victor up top. The swing is there and the shot is two from tens. The Red Bull clutch for Sentinels. Last round. We're lag on the big moments from their big players. Pekata and tens now. Two big clutches to keep this game somewhat interesting. And it's what everybody came here to see is moments like this from Tens. One enemy remaining. With just a sheriff. Vintage Tens moment. And while that feels like a really good high right now, I, I have to point out the fact that unfortunately Tens just doubled his kills on the map with that 2K. That one hurts. Oh, aggro from some. Last time they conditioned him to stay back behind the wall. This time. There's so many layers. And Sam has just been, he's just gotten Ten's number th this entire half. Yes, I would love to see the head-to-head -head at some point during this game because it's got to be so favorable towards the new kid on the block. Poison's off. Once again, he's going to find value from back yellow. He spots another. He's gotten three, not able One to get the fourth, but I mean, at this point, it's done. Oh, almost tagged Saucy too. That would have been info, and surely the round over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Poison's off. Wow. And they know where he is. At Again. least they have an idea. Victor, he's so aware, dude. He is just consistently on the money with every piece of utility. 
hilarious that that gap in the smoke there from Sasi actually nets him the kill, but that could be enough. It is a brutal battering in this first half by energy. 10 Switching to sides. two. I don't know if there's a way back into this. I don't know that there is either, man. It just, it's so clean from top to bottom. They haven't been able to deal with Sam back yellow. They haven't been able to get advantages for them off of him too. Again, I point back to the Sam 10s 1v1 that we've seen a couple of times and now Sam has just had his number. If they, if they can't find openings with the tip of their spear, then how do they? Maybe defensively you can find a little bit more success, but that's just a tall order. Yeah, that one hurts. Sentinels on the back foot, only two rounds in the first half. And there's really not even much to discuss for 10s. 4 and 11, 4 and 12 for Def. How do they get back in this? I don't know they can, but you know what? Maybe Sue and Baby Bay know. They're oh. standing by for a quick interview at halftime. Thank you very much, Doug and Bala. Standing here with Baby Bay, who is in the house. <laughs> Baby Bay, it is such a pleasure to be able to speak with you. What brings you into town today? Um, honestly, like I was here uh, rooting for the Sentinels, but uh, the boys on NRG looking too cold right now, too cold. So it's uh, it's gonna be a rough comeback. But uh, I know we got some Sentinels fans in the house. Like they need your energy right now. I know you were saying that this is a map that Sam is particularly nasty on, but you made it clear you're here rooting for the Sentinels. So if we got Coach Baby Bay up in there, what would you be saying to them? <laughs> Honestly, right now, I'm just trying to get some energy into the 10s, man. He just needs to needs to turn up. He's the one player that can completely change the entire series. So I'm really hoping he can bring it back into this half and just go off. Well, it's still not over. We'll see how it goes in that second half. But speaking for yourself, we saw how challenges went out. Now that split one and the midseason faceoff has wrapped up, how are you feeling overall? And where's your headspace at? It's definitely not the result we wanted, but you know we're we're working hard every day, and uh, and I'm trying to make it to play with these guys on this stage. So you know I want to compete against the best, and uh, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get there. So it's looking good for us. Speaking to that, it's clear that there are so many fans here that are fans of yours. It's clear that, you know, you want to be playing on this stage. <laughs> Finesse my daddy and very nice side, very nice side. <laughs> so with that being said, you know, what is that mentality like headed into the that, that next year? Can we see you here? I'm going to do my best to make it. Like I said, I'm a, I, I'm a hard worker. I do what it takes to make it. So I'm going to make sure my team's ready for this upcoming uh, challenger split and really show up. All right. Last question before I get to let you go. Any last words being here in person in front of all of these amazing fans and of course all the lovely viewers online. Honestly, if you guys aren't here um, and you're thinking about coming, you should definitely come. The arena is sick. The energy in here is like nothing else. So you guys got to get out here. Come show out. It's, I guarantee you will not regret it. Thank you very much for taking the time for this interview. Doug and Bala, back to you. Thank you so much, Sue. Always good to hear from Baby Bang. You gotta a, love the guy. It's a travesty he's not on the stage. He has such a true. wide personality. Lovely guy. But right now, focus back on energy and Sentinels. Crowd refocusing. We're refocusing. It is a monumental ask from them. I think the Lotus game definitely showed some improvements from Sentinels, but this Icebox game is a complete shift. Energy not giving them any room to work. And you can see... They're trying to push the pace to try to equalize things to get a momentum back their way. Zekin getting the opener instantly traded back though. And Crashies continues to form. He actually falls off of that again. Speaks to the confidence here from Tens that he's showing. His team all falls. The dink is nice. But you want energy in him. You need a moment. Like that 1v2 at the end of the half. Tough to stress really the importance of this pistol for Sentinels. You have to convert. There's just no no other really way to describe it. An advantage started for Sentinels here. Zekin got that first pick, but immediately two more kills coming in from NRG. In time. A factor. We saw how they were so willing to bring it down to the end. They're going for the hit right now. I think Bakal is aware of the fact that Finesse is gonna to try to apply pressure mid. Yeah, he is, but he's spotted by the turret. Finesse patient. Here's him rotate off, too. You see his little mind games, his little micro left. chess matches happening throughout the map. Orb's gonna fall now. Gonna have the opportunity to go for it. Finesse. Trying to find a gap to 20 seconds. This is all the way down to it. Tens this week. They're just waiting for that. Max fuel. Yep. 
be able to come up. And now the wall's up too. Sassi's pushed back right, right, right into the Molly and Finesse strikes at just the right time. They're breaking their own wall there. So they can get the angle back onto it. And yeah, there's the angle that they broke it for. It's suffocating. They had the perfect idea there. The wall a little deeper. The Viper wall coming up with max fuel. The Molly as well landing trust where they're trying to challenge back against anything. Oh my god, that is that is disgusting. You mentioned suffocating. 78% of the time you find yourself down at the beginning of the round. That that sucks. Like that's so difficult that's to navigate. Yeah. And the funny part is it, it actually is an issue now for Sentinels. This is two weeks in a row where they're struggling on that front exactly. With a player like Tens, that's not how you want to start the season. They won the series against 100 Thieves despite being below in that specific stat. Let's take a look at how far back Sam is playing, still in spawn. Boys and orb emitting. Expecting pressure Here. from mid. And it's it a force like as well, by the way, from Sentinels. Got to touch on that real quick. Yeah, you kind of have to. Bulldog, no armor for Zekin. Light armor, Stinger, Spectre for the rest of them. Toxins going up. Toxin screen down. And I wondered just how antsy Sassy would get. He's playing close by mid, but not pushing for reject. Meanwhile, energy are towards A. Here. You can see the pings on the minimap too. Tench playing back site, waiting to respond. You've got Zekin close by as well. A little damage found there, but Finesse diving through the smoke against Sassi. Yeah. They expect the second here. No. It's another opener. 30 seconds left. For Sentinels, they find themselves up pretty big on numbers here. But oh, Sash should find so much value. Spike down. Oh my goodness. That was probably the best chance they had. Numbers wise, and it just once again falls apart. The force does not pay off. Gotta say as well, that bulldog from some. Just nasty. Over and over and over. One of the few players who's consistently relying on it in these anti-ecos and constantly finding values, especially One against forces like this. One enemy remaining. It's all light armor, so much easier to find that two-tap kill. All smiles, man, and they have every reason to. They're on the verge of the biggest margin of any America's map so far. Placing swamp. swamp Big opener. They were able to buy up enough to have some some bite in this round. Yeah, but because of that, Saucy's not really in a position to completely deny this. He doesn't have that molly. You talk about a buy. Yes, they got bulldogs. They have a guardian. But no mollies, no utils, so they can't deny this plan, even with the breaking of the wall. Yeah, but what they do have is map Spike presence. Planted. Look at how they're starting to flank around. They've got mid presence. They've got tens on the flank. Huge and ready for it, not again. Sam once again at a shot to get the best of tens, and he does. That head to head, I'm sure, is going to be interesting to discuss afterwards, but for now, a couple of moments still in this map. First Sentinels have to figure out how they navigate with three Bulldogs getting the spike diffused. Re-establishing control on the site with so much before them. Energy with so many tools at their disposal. Artist trying to put them away. Zekin in this 1v3 turned into nothing. A statement made from NRG. They look rough last week, but they're back on top. They absolutely are. Everybody pegged them within that top three. And then they lost. And the discussion shifted all of a sudden. But not anymore. Making a statement, that is for sure. Making everybody know 100% is still NA's best. A good showing from Sentinels, I think, especially that first map on Lotus. It was a nice attempt at a counter pick. And you see some signs of them being able to commit a little further within the meta where they've had issues trying to adapt to it on other maps. You see them commit back to Double Duelist, the recommittal after lock-in. For comfort reasons, but 
I think the desk touched it on earlier today. This is a new team. This is a new project, one of the first of its kind, intra-region, with the Brazilian players joining in. And there's room for growth, that's for sure, but in terms of map pool, I think NRG absolutely got the advantage of this, forcing them into the places where you know they're trying to force themselves to be comfortable. All right. I, I think it's just such a huge testament. And, you know, you kind of alluded to this earlier. Yeah, there was still some weakness that they showed on Lotus, but the fact that they were able to close it out in the face of a comeback to attempt from Sentinels, that was their weak map. Yep. That's where they looked rough. So if you're able to check that box off, I'm thinking about energy long picture here, right? Yep. Over the entire split. If they're able to take care of their map weakness, they're able to completely dominate on their map choices, NRG very quickly are answering the questions that we had at the end of last week. Oh, for sure. And also bringing out some surprises, you're right. The Victor Chat in that first map looked great. Yep. Crashy's back to form. Finesse continuing to frag. Victor looked good on the jet. And Artist with some consistency, too. Yeah, yep. Looking good, NRG, looking good. I also have to say, you keep, we kept touching on that Psalm versus Tens fight, the battle of the influencers at this point, right? W streamer <laughs> versus W streamer. But Psalm was so good. Somebody had to take the L in that fight, and yep. Psalm was just so dominant on Icebox. Yep. He's continuing to, to impress on so many levels again. Yeah, I agree. This guy was not playing on that international level prior to this year. He came in, had some massive shoes to fill. It was Marks, one of the best controllers in the world, and he's doing such a good job. And he just seems to be getting better, to be honest, right? Like every single time we see him, he continues to, to perform at a high level, continues to show that, yeah, he belongs. He's very comfortable on this stage. Yep. And there's no doubt about it. You guys have to take care of the MVP. Scan the QR code on the screen. Let us know who you think is deserving. You got Victor, Som, or the Galaxy Brain uh, in Finesse. Plenty of good options. There, really. was, there was so many moments that you could definitely attribute to the Galaxy Brain, but he was yep. good himself on an individual yep. level. Absolutely. I mean, I look back to Victor on that Lotus, though, coming out with a brand new agent for him on a new on a map that we haven't seen him play that agent on and it looked great then saw him as well on icebox was again we just talked about that duel a big factor in why tens was not a factor on that server today obliteration is probably the best way to describe what we just saw as energy takedown sandals 2-0 let's throw it back down to the desk gb and the rest of the panel to talk through what they saw Thank you so much, Doug and Bala. And I have to say, Doug, you know, that next season of Miami Vice, you are a shoe in for it. I believe it. <laughs> All right. Love you, buddy. Great job, though, as always, to you guys. And, yeah, I mean, let's go ahead and break this down uh, because I think that, you know, and it's I, actually, I shouldn't even say I think that. I know that. Energy fans are elated. They're so happy because they feel like this team, who struggled last week, Wyatt, they are back there here and could be recency bias, but energy to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was uncommon to see them lose in the fashion that they did last week, and to see them just immediately bounce back, it gives hope for the energy fans. And damn it, old boy, it gives hope to America. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure we have some Canadians on that team. Yeah, close New enough. Vanessa's is an honorary North American. North America. North America. <laughs> North America. I mean, and yeah, a little help from Europe. I mean, you get the point, though. Yes, you, I you do. understand where I'm, I'm taking this, where I'm weaving the story, blood. okay? It's, you it's been a tough time in these first two weeks for any North American teams at NRG giving some hope to the region. Yeah, I think they absolutely are. And what they succeeded with, again, I think, was playing well to the issues that their opponent's composition had. For Sentinels, yeah. their idea with this harbor comp was, we have this cool thing called the Cove. We can surely get the spike down of tendencies pushing deep and then play into these post plants. And fairly consistent, consistently, they managed to get that spike down. But Energy's retakes were just really, really strong. They had a good read of when these executes were coming, and Finesse would pre-position people to be able to go for really quick kind of flood retakes. And also, they were double flanking, which is something that so yeah. few North American teams do on this map, which always makes me mauled because it's so strong against A takes. It's really clear that this squad knows how to play this map on defense super well at a macro level, as Finesse always has. And I think to kind of talk about this series in a totality, this was kind of the redemption arc for Finesse. If he for ran sure. out of ideas on Lotus last week, he had perfect ideas, I feel, throughout this entire series today. Yeah, yeah. It, it truly, truly was exquisite there. Uh, on the other side today, on the other side of the field, you know, we do have to address Tens right now. I, I think it's safe to say, right, like Tens, phenomenal player. We know that the kid's capable, but this was certainly not his best series. Why is that? 
Yeah, I, I think as well for this one, it's because of the support. Again, it was similar issues that we were seeing before, right? This composition sure. had a Sova, no Sky. It didn't feel like he had the resources to be set up for success. And what was that, 3 and 15 in opening kills? It's unlike him. Yeah, he had so many first deaths in that half. And I, I can't help but feel that... Uh, I, there was times where I think he was trying to be a hero and he wasn't able to. Sure. But also, I just can't get down with this comp for that team. I know this is the comp that DRX had used previously on Icebox when the harbor was first kind of coming into the fold there. But I would prefer the loud angle for this Sentinel team where you would have Zekin on the sky because... Even from what we just saw in Lotus, Zekin's sky yeah. is crazy. Yeah. He pops so on that one. And I think Sentinel's best moments that we've seen from them so far is during the executes when you have Zekin and Tens in tandem on the site. That's when they can deal serious damage. Yeah. And I think on the sky, if he was a bit closer with Tens to pop flash out of Tens' mm. uh, smokes, sure, that sure. kind of thing, and they were able to push a bit more effectively together, that might have been nice because Tens alone there and just with the support he was getting from the Sova just didn't, asking a lot from him. didn't feel like enough. Yeah, yeah, and, and it ended up not being enough, obviously, in this one. But if you compare that to week number one, the compositions they were running and the maps that they were playing were focused on giving Tens tools to succeed. And you saw Tens was fantastic, the best performer of maybe the whole weekend on that matchup against 100 Thieves today didn't have the same resources and wasn't able to provide the same value. But I also think part of that is because of this young man that we're going to talk about right here, and that's Som, because Som was cracked out. And obviously, it's expected on Icebox, Wyatt. Like, this is like the Som box, if you will. Yeah, Yellow Box <laughs> is his home. Yeah, it, it really is. This is three ice boxes in a row now with his you know, what is currently a short stint with NRG, and he's just gone crazy on all of them from the debut game against Koi, where he was actually the guy that brought them back into the game when they were down at the beginning of Lock-In. It was him, the new player, bringing them back into it and carrying that over again today. It's just three performances in a row where he's just gone demonic yeah. on the map. He is the, the key element of them winning on this map. And again, it's just kind of crazy to me that they didn't pick it last week. I'll never understand, but that's okay. They won <laughs> this week, GB. We're, we're, okay. we're here now. I'm we're here on. now. I'm moving on. No more Lotus picks, please. Except they're actually pretty good at that map now. Um, <laughs> actually, anyways, yes. I think that we're seeing, again, a continuation of some of the stories that we've been talking about with NRG, where versus back when they were Optic, yeah. they were very reliant on Ye. And everyone else on the team was great, but that's how they built themselves, on letting that guy succeed. Yeah. Now in this version with NRG, there's so much more flexibility, and it's not the same thing where we're making artists sure. Superstar. It's flexibility in the compositions and different players popping off, as we saw today with Som and with Victor, especially in map one. It's a long season. It's a long season, and everyone's going to have to step up. And I think for Som today, this definitely was prevalent for him. Looking forward to seeing what he could do next week. But let's actually go ahead and check in on everyone's favorite social media platform that surely never breaks. It's Twitter for our poll. Som is your winner. But I almost feel like it. it I think Som deserved it, personally speaking, but, you know, W streamer. I would vote for Finesse in this one. I was just so impressed with the calling across the board, Wyatt. True. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? Yeah. Good news, Mimi, because while you say that you would have voted for Finesse, we actually have Finesse standing by. That's right. For a Horizon post-match interview, we have Finesse standing by with Smigs. What you got? Thank you very much, Golden Boy, standing with Finesse, who yelled facts as Mimi yelled out that Finesse is indeed a her MVP for this match. And for good reason. Congratulations, FNS. This is such a reversal of what we saw last week. And what a way to do so. How satisfying is it to not only walk away with the win, but to do so against Sentinels, who looked so hot against 100 Thieves last week, and also do so in such convincing fashion on that icebox? Uh, we kind of saw, at least I saw the Lotus pick coming because they had information on us and we didn't have much on or any on them because they hadn't played Lotus yet. So I kind of saw it coming a little bit. Uh, we knew that if we got through Lotus that we'd have a pretty good chance because Icebox has been a good map for us, at least in practice. So we were just hoping that we were able to get by Lotus and, you know, having that 9-3 first half on Lotus was massive for us, especially starting attack because last time we started defense versus Lev and that didn't go so well for us. So we started attack and, yeah, we played a lot better today. And speaking of that Lotus, we saw a few changes come around this week, specifically with Double Controller. Were those changes made specifically with takeaways from that loss from last week, or is, or is this something you've just been thinking about all along? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of inspiration was taken from the Lev comp, to be honest. I mean, we saw how King was playing with the Viper, and we're like, all right, got to add that. Um, so we added Viper. A lot of European teams also play that that Viper character. So in general, it was pretty, it was pretty easy to implement since we have like three Viper players now. So. We just tried the best that we could to implement it as fast as possible, had enough practice on it, so we're pretty confident. 
I feel like a lot of teams are also experimenting with Harbor Viper, as we saw Sentinels do in both maps as well, but you have chosen to not do that. What are your thoughts on Har Harbor Viper meta overall, and why have you chosen not to utilize it? I mean, we have on Pearl, but that's a... I mean, in general, it's a very, very good way to play, but I think we've been practicing so much against it, we kind of have counters for it, so it's still not a bad thing to do it. It's just, you know, if you do get anti-strat a little bit, or if, you know, the other opponent has, you know, decent counters, it's pretty hard. All right, last question for you, Finesse. I know last week, a lot of people came into week one talking about energy definitely being top three. And I know out of, after the loss, there were some who were like, mm, what's going on? But now with this performance, I'm sure that a lot of doubters have been proven wrong. How do you feel about the team overall right now? And how confident are you in the condition of the team? Still not totally convinced that we're as good as we can be, for sure. Um, but again, we have a long season ahead of us, and that's what's good about this format, is we have time to prepare and get better. So we're just gonna do the best that we can to try and you know improve while this you know matches go along, and yeah, do our thing. Awesome, thank you very much for taking the time for this interview. Finesse, for now, we are gonna head to a short commercial break. We are gonna take a look at the post-match Prime Gaming highlights, and when we come back, it'll be MIBR taking on crew. It's a beautiful Sunday, so uh, why don't we go ahead and stay inside and watch some Valorant, shall we? Two prolific teams in the Americas region square off here for the first time at the Riot Games Arena. NRG takes on Sentinels. Flash forward, Crashy's dancing around the cloud, but the NRG flood trying to funnel through. Victor getting one back. 3v3 here for the rest of the side. Or oh. spraying through as Victor's gotten the third. Oh, Four. nice! Sick. And Zekin getting two with the spam. Okay, it's coming back. Yeah, it's back. The flash is gone, though, from Zekin. <laughs> Sentinels once again wanting to fight with the paranoia. Oh, oh my gosh, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. Oh. Sentinels gave a run at it, but NRG close out load is 13 to 10. Gonna have to deal with for Sentinels. Oh, you still have another Molly out from Sasi, who's now dead. Zekin spotted, dropped. Nice. But Finesse continuing to frag. Continuing to lead from the front. Sassi and Pakada outnumbered and outgunned. He's got it down to one. Victor up top. The swing is there and the shot is two from ten. The Red Bull clutch for Sentinels. But Thon should find so much value. Spike down. Numbers wise, and it just once again falls apart. A statement made from NRG. They looked rough last week, but. They're back on top. 